yeah, little little surfing. Kamala Harris does some robot surfing. That's right. Um, watched her speech yesterday. Yeah, at the uh, Economic Club of Pittsburgh, and I'm going to give her kudos. Um, not in substance, style, baby, style. Um, she has gotten a hell of a lot better, without a doubt. Gotten a hell of a lot better at reading off the teleprompter. Um, again, she was very, very good changing the voice, the fluctuation. Um, I can, you know, my bull excrement meter is is very, very sensitive, and I can spot it a mile away. But you can understand, okay? She is a a Democrat, and she can call upon uh, people in Hollywood that have played presidents in the past and uh, ask them how they did it. And she's doing a very good job reading off the teleprompter, a very good job of saying a lot, but not saying anything that makes any sense. A lot of bromides out there, without a doubt. With that being said, let's let's take this and put this aside. I'm going to go through some of the, the major points. First and foremost, her speech is, again, about running things out of Washington, D.C. Government intervention will solve all of our problems. All we need to do is to look to Washington, D.C., and everything is going to be great. She acknowledged the fact that prices are higher. Um, but again, you know, uh, it's got to blame it on corporations and price gouging. Let's let's go through some of the um, the ridiculous ideas that be put forward. Well, you know, what? we'll start off. We'll start off with real estate. Start off with real estate. We'll start off with homes. Um, again, this is she's mentioned this before. Sounds great. Sounds great for people that just don't like to think very deeply. She's going to build millions of homes, 3 million homes all across the country. Really? Yeah, you see, um, we have this, this constitution and we have states and we have local rights and we have zoning restrictions. How, how in the world, how in the world are you going to do that? How, how in the world are you going to come to small towns and communities and tell them, no, 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 no. You guys liked having your single family uh, residences in your town. We're going to blow that up because we're from the government and we're here to help and we're going to change all the zoning rules in your town. Again, it, it, it's patently absurd. It's ridiculous. Another thing that's patently absurd and ridiculous is the handout to first-time home buyers. $25,000. Again, the old Oprah Winfrey, you get a house, you get a house, you get a house. No, $25,000 to help people out with the down payment. Um, to be honest here, um, if if twenty five thousand dollars is going to put you over the top, put you over the top and allow you to reach for that down payment, don't buy the house. Don't buy the house I, again. It's just facts, people. Again, I'm I'm, you know, I'm not Mary Poppins. No spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down. You're not entitled to a home. You are not entitled to a home. You can go out and you can earn one. And I've said this before. Um, if you're not ready to own a home, don't overextend yourself. And I, I, I don't understand. Well, I understand, but it just was dumb. I mean, back in the day, you needed at least 20% to, down to buy a house. I, I recommend more than that. Quite frankly, better to be safe than sorry. Um, you want to buy a home that is manageable. We've done this before. We've done this before in the country. Let's get people into homes, everybody. Yep, that's the government's job. Oh, yay. Again, these are not very deep thinkers. Um, these are people that, that don't have any sort of prudence when it comes to anything that they do. It's like the first thought that pops in their mind. They're like, let's do it. We can go all, all the way back to the Clinton administration when Andrew Cuomo was in charge of housing and urban development for Bill Clinton. And that's where all of the funky mortgages came around. The, uh, the, the no money down, the, the uh, no income, no job, no assets loans. How did that turn out? How did that turn out for the country? How did it turn out for all these people that ended up getting themselves in homes that they shouldn't have been in in the first place? Stay away. Stay away. 
Let's move on to manufacturing. Okay, uh, gra- it looks like Pennsylvania is pretty much ground zero. Um, I think Trump and Kamala Harris feel that if they whoever wins Pennsylvania is going to win this. And everyone's talking about manufacturing. And we're going to give tax credits to this one. We're going to give tax credits to that one. And we're going to tear up this one. We're going to do that to that one. Just, just stay out of it. Just stay out of it. All you need to do is to create an environment where companies will be successful, get out of their way, reduced regulations, have a favorable tax code, don't burden these businesses, and they will come. They will come. Businesses will come. Businesses will grow. Some will make it. Some won't. But that's just how the system works. You need to stop using the tax code. Got to stop using the federal registry to carve out little niches and handouts and giveaways to various different corporations, but it works for them. It's helping them to get elected. Is it good overall for the economy and the country? No, no. It's Island of Dr. Moreau type stuff. You're creating economic genetic defects, if you will. And that was a major part of her plan. Um, what else should we talk about when it comes to come? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> um, the small business straw man. She loves this um, opportunity economy and telling everybody that, you know, that that everyone's got aspirations and small business owners and all this stuff. And she is going to give them a $50,000 tax deduction when you start a new business. Now, um, I started a business decades ago. And let me tell you what I didn't need when I started a new business was a tax deduction uh, because it wasn't making any money. Uh, we weren't making any money. That's, you know, what happens when you start a business. You don't need a tax deduction when you start a business. So again, here you go. Here's nothing. Sounds good. Sounds good. Again, yeah, we'll go bromide surfing. Woo! Kamala, going surfing. Um, it, it's not going to do much. Um, we live in a red tape nation. Um, several years ago, several years ago, um, I wrote a piece entitled the Lilliputians on steroids. Actually, one of of my listeners sent me a recent interview with, uh, Elon Musk and Elon Musk complaining about stupid regulations and, uh, fines he has to pay for nothing. Great interview. And, um, I get it. I get it. This is what holds businesses back. And that was that was part of Jonathan Swift's novel. Novel, you know, you're talking about Gulliver's Travels. The Lilliputians were, well, they were a takeoff on the haughty politicians of England at that point in time with their rules and regulations. We have the same thing today in this country: these government officials tying people down. What we need to do, what you really want to do to help small businesses is you need to eliminate mines. You need to eliminate ridiculous regulations, paperwork, the nonsense that, that people have to go through. That, that's what really will help small business. That's what's really going to encourage small business. So, yeah, this, um, this nonsense, this uh, straw man, small business crap that she keeps putting out there to me is patently absurd, not to mention the fact I understand it. I run a small business. We cater to small business owners. That is the bulk of our clientele around the country. So we understand what they're going through. She doesn't. She doesn't. But again, I was interviewed uh, yesterday, and um, they asked me about Kamala's speech and, you know, people have talked about this and the fact that right, she's not giving any specifics, just saying going to do this, going to do that. I, I, she didn't have to. What, what, what have I, I told you before? I mean, again, um, many, many people will be swayed by this stuff. I, I told you very, the most consequential voters out there are the dumb vote. Um, if you're going to make certain people, oh, she just makes me feel wonderful and great. Again, I go back to. Peggy Joseph, that we've discussed countless times over the years, going back to the Obama years. The, the young lady interviewed after the Obama rally in Sarasota, Florida, 
Oh, yeah, if I vote for Obama, I'm not going to have to worry about my mortgage and my car payment, my electric bill, yada, yada, yada. If he, I vote for him, he's going to help me. People believe this nonsense. They do. And uh, listen, you know, if people are going to buy it, they're going to buy it. She's going to keep selling it. We shall see. Watchdog on WallStreet.com.